On show 499, standard range plus deliveries for Europe, the Honda e-Specs revealed, and a Chinese firm investing 23 billion. Well, those stories and many more coming up on today's EV News Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to the show. Your edition for Thursday, 13th of June today. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story I can find to save you time. And as always, thank you to the very kind team at myev.com. They're all about time saving as well, and they're all about finding you the best car or the best buyer for your car. All about buying and selling in the USA. And check them out, myev.com. It is the ultimate time saving device for buying and selling only EVs. So Morton Grove on Twitter today is someone that I've chatted to and followed and uh, his uh, knowledge of shipping movement in terms of delivering Teslas is second to none. Morton sent me a tweet forwarded uh, from a chap called Gregor who said this, got delivery of European SR Plus booked for the 20th now and by the 20th he meant the 20th of June and he doesn't say left or right hand drive. I'm thinking probably left hand drive because look, let's face it, the right hand drive models haven't even started to be delivered yet but I may be wrong. So, if you have any more details on this, please let me know. I thought Standard Range Plus, this is, shows what I know, were, was already on sale in Europe, but clearly, from the excitement over this, just the performance and long-range versions have been delivered so far in Europe. I didn't know that. So, again, lots of people excited today on Twitter, and I'm thinking, hmm, why is that? It's because they've ordered Standard Range Plus, and they finally get them. Again, this is a European delivery. Those dates have been booked in now by Tesla for the 20th, June 20th. So, so I don't know if any of those are going to be right-hand drive or whether there's another boat carrying the UK Tesla Model 3s. If you know, if you have insight, let me know and I'll pass it on. Well, the car site Jalopnik says that Tesla woke up recently and realized that people maybe would like electric cars. Last week, Toyota laid out their ambitious plans for building more all-electric, pure electric vehicles than it had previously figured. Half of all its sales by 2025, it says, need to be pure electric. Automotive News says that the executive VP uh, Shigeki Terashi, Toyota's R&D chief, outlined their new roadmap in a briefing about Toyota's pure EV plans. Now, he cited what he called a sudden surge in EV popularization in markets around the world and that's caused for Toyota to scratch their heads and think again. He says this progress has surpassed the target. We have entered a new age. Hmm. So it seems like Toyota think that everybody woke up in 2019 and had a sudden urge for electric cars. Yeah, it's been going on a while, Toyota, but you know what? Welcome to the party. We'd rather you were at the party, albeit fashionably late, than making your silly hybrids. Uh, they say that to achieve the plans, Toyota is going to accelerate EV development, partly in response to increasingly stringent emissions. Those are the requirements being placed both by China and Europe as well. It plans to start making EVs in China next year on its way to releasing at least 10 battery-powered models worldwide by the early 20s. No, this isn't going to be a massive shift for the whole company to start making EVs, but considering they currently run adverts saying, we choose not to plug in, it's only going to be a very short time before all those buyers who they have educated uh, by watching their TV ads and their commercials, who they are very, at the moment, very busy telling hybrids are the way forward, don't get a plug-in car, Plug-in cars are, you know, the charges are going to be covered in cobwebs if you watch their TV ads or the current one where someone's in the middle of a desert just standing by their car as it's charging. Weirdness, I know. Now, Toyota's R&D chief outlining their new plan, saying Toyota is going to be making pure electric cars. So is this good money spent marketing or not? I'll let you make your own mind up. But for every time you see one of their self-charging hybrid ads, it's another bit of work they're going to have to undo in a short couple of years. They are, what's the phrase? Boxing themselves into the corner. And it's going to cost them a lot of money to market their way out of it. Good luck, Toyota. It's good to have you at the EV party. It's fun here, isn't it? Come on in. We'll get you a drink. I think you need one. Now, moving on to Jaguar, one of my listeners actually asked me to clarify this, and I think it's a really interesting point. I'm always happy to be asked to clarify things, but I mentioned about a Jaguar recall that was going on, and he emailed me to say, yes, it is, but could you possibly please clarify it's a voluntary recall? Because he says, by saying it's a recall, I almost 
play up the fact that it's more unsafe than it really is. So yes, let me give you the full details on this and make very, very clear that Jaguar has voluntarily recalled its first electric car, the I-Pace, last week over a regen braking issue. According to a statement by the US Traffic Safety Authority, NHTSA, over 3,000 cars, uh, the I-Pace cars, are going to be recalled, voluntarily recalled. Uh, this is an article by Electric Car Reports. According to Jaguar, there isn't a problem with the I-Pace in normal operation, hence the non-mandatory nature of the recall. Instead, Jaguar's engineers have discovered that if the electrical regen system fails for the braking, there is an increased delay between when you hit the brakes and when the vehicle starts to decelerate. Now as such, the affected vehicles don't meet the regulated standard for the time to transition for brake force to hit the friction brakes. Jaguar is notifying owners and dealers are going to be updating software to reduce the delay the recall is expected to begin on 1st of July. Voluntary recall. I don't know about you, but when I hit the brake pedal, I kind of want something to happen at a time and with an urgency that you fully expect. By the sounds of it, this isn't unsafe, but it's a voluntary recall with the braking system. I don't know about you. I, I think I would pretty much get that scene to straight away. I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to read more from the Electric Cars Report article. Now, many, many people are excited about this next car. We're talking the Honda E. More specs have been revealed and a equal 50-50 weight distribution achieved. Teased earlier this year, Honda's first production all-electric vehicle is nearing its official reveal. It should happen later this year to ease the weight. Honda's released new technical details about the Honda E. Going to become the first ever product of the automaker built on a dedicated EV platform, says Motor1.com. Well, Honda says the architecture has been developed from the ground up, with the main goal being offering a rewarding, responsive driving experience. I think all car makers would want you to have a rewarding, responsive driving experience. How many car makers sell you a car with a rather limp and non-rewarding driving experience? I mean, it gets you where you want to go, but you won't have fun driving it. I mean... Yeah, exactly. All car makers uh, say they're going to do that. Uh, to achieve this, the engineers have positioned the battery under the floor centrally within the wheelbase. Say Honda. They're dead pleased they worked this out. All they had to do was buy, I don't know, a Tesla and work out, how are these chaps and chapesses doing it? Oh, right, let's do the same. But Honda, very, very, Honda are very happy they've worked out where to put the battery underneath you. Uh, the smart integration, they're calling it, allows for a 50-50 weight balance and what they call a low center of gravity. Yeah, y you get that on all EVs because unless you're putting the battery in the roof rack, you tend to get the weight down low in an EV. But Honda are very, very happy they've worked out that there's a low center of gravity on this thing. Uh, the Honda e is powered by its rear wheels connected to a high torque electric motor. As for the battery pack, it's water cooled and they say it can take either type 2 AC or CCS DC rapid charging. Well done. Covering off the basics now. Uh, with the latter providing a quick charge of 80% in 30 minutes, a complete charge of the battery is going to get you and, and th th this isn't going to break any records, I'm afraid. It's going to get you 124 miles. Oh. Well, oh. Well, yeah. Yeah. Look, it's a beautiful car. You're not buying this car for the range, and you're not buying it for the technology. You're buying it because it is ruddy gorgeous. And if you are buying one, you've made a very, very wise decision. It is such a gorgeous car. Uh, not too many long road trips being done on it, but you know what? You are going to feel so good driving it. You're going to, every time you lock the car, and you know, you do the look over the shoulder, and you look back at you, as you're walking away from your car, you know, you do the, you do the little half turn around just to, just to have a look. Every time you do that, you're going to smile. You're making a wise decision. Let's move on to Fastned. And Fastned are a charging network here in Europe. And they recently performed a charging test of a Tesla Model 3 long range. Yesterday on the show, I told you all about a new update that's been provided to the long range Tesla Model 3 here in Europe to allow it to charge even faster now on third party networks. Now, Fastned tried it on one of their 175 kilowatt fast chargers in Europe. According to Mark Kane at Inside EVs, the Model 3 was charging between 130 and 150 from 10 to 50 percent state of charge uh, that's up from 125 previously but it is somewhat down on the ultimate speed which this software update enabled indeed fast ned chargers well the the one they did it on isn't capable of going that fast tesla's press release did say uh, or the little note 
not sure it was official press release, but the little, little note uh, that I got sent said that it was allowing up to 200 kilowatt charge speeds on a charger that could provide it. Overall, the higher power should allow saving of a few minutes uh, at a charging session. Fastned says that also this summer it will enable its first ABB DC fast chargers. Those are the ones charging at 350 kilowatts, and that should enable the full potential of the Model 3 up between 190 and 200 kilowatts peak charge speeds. I'll pop a link to Motor One if you want to read more. As an aside, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen my road trip last weekend to head to Fully Charged Live. Somewhere I stopped on the way home to charge was the BP Charge Master hub in Milton Keynes. Next to that, four Ionity chargers are being built. Ionity is the European network, which can install up to 350 kilowatt chargers. The cables, I called them 150s. I did a little video and I said they look like they're ready to go at 150 kilowatts because the cables look thin. Somebody on, replied on Twitter, no, 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 they haven't got to be the thick water-cooled cables to get to 350 kilowatts. And I thought they did. I thought Bjorn Nyland's videos, he was checking out the ionities, that they, the ones that are capable of 350, but they hadn't been enabled at 350 because the cables weren't ready yet and they were just waiting to install some of the thicker cooled cables. But again, I may be wrong. I defer to you if uh, if that's correct. I was a little confused by that because I thought that they weren't ready for the 350s. But anyway, hey, look, <laughs> not that you can buy a car that charges at that speed yet, but, ah, you know, kind of geeking out. Let's finish off talking about the Model 3 charge speed then. And one of my favorite writers at Clean Technica is Dr. Max Holland, someone I've chatted to on Twitter over the years. And if I've got a particularly sticky question, I know that he can answer it. Following up on some analysis that Clean Technica published previously, a recent real-world DC charge test by Bjorn Nyland, who I mentioned, and his YouTube videos are always excellent, it clearly shows the Model 3's significant charging advantage over an Audi e-tron, even on a CCS charger, which isn't taking full advantage of Tesla's potential. So this video would have been made, I imagine, before... I don't know, I haven't actually watched the video. I've just read Clean Technica's write-up of the video. I imagine this was done even before the Model 3 long-range software update was done. The Tesla Model 3 long-range added 179 miles of range in 20 minutes. That's 61% more than an Audi e-tron. It added 111 miles in the same time says Dr. Holland. Audi has claimed in the past that the e-tron is better at charging than Tesla vehicles, and he says that's grossly inaccurate. We've dug into it previously, and they've now got more real-world data thanks to Bjorn's testing. The result is on optimal 350 kilowatt CCS hardware. Now, that hardware even puts Audi in a much better light. The Model 3, on the other hand, is not even at its best on the CCS chargers at the time of this video being made. Its performance on supercharger V3 stalls is even better. The Tesla can drive for around... A Model 3 long range can do about two hours at highway speeds for each 15 minutes of charging. That's an 8 to 1 ratio. The Audi e-tron can drive for two hours for each 30 minute charging session, a 4 to 1 ratio. And this all stems, and I can see why Dr. Max Holland is still proving his point on this, because this all stems from an Audi presentation which was given, which, you know, I'm not being unkind when I say this was a bit of a cock-up from beginning to end. They took some data, which was taken from Electric. The Electric report was taking something they found on Twitter. Then Audi changed the scale of the graph and there was some misrepresentation of the numbers going on. They subsequently apologized for not representing it perfectly, but said they stuck by the point they were making. Anyway, Clean Technica took it upon themselves to say, hang on a minute and uh, and really dig into those uh, those details. So uh, I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to read more. It's a long article. It's super techie, super geeky, my kind of thing. But if you want to read more, uh, you can click on that. Talking batteries, LG Chem and Geely are forming a joint venture in China for the production of electric car batteries. The plan is now to establish a factory that will have an annual production capacity of 10 gigawatt hours by the end of 2021 to supply batteries for Geely EV, says the industry website Electrive. Now the South Korean battery giant and Tesla's largest car manufacturer are each investing $94 million in the project from 2022. Geely's electric cars will be equipped with energy storage units from the joint venture. 
With uh, While reports uh, all talk of batteries, it seems clear that the planned factory is for cells, not actual batteries. Uh, in China, currently only electric cars with batteries from local production are even eligible for government subsidies, not with South Korean batteries. However, recently the government announced it's phasing out the all-electric subsidies while removing limits on the number of uh, number plates which are allocated to EVs, both of which considerably open up the market, not just for joint ventures with Chinese companies, but also for foreign companies like Tesla who now have a more even playing field and doing things like building Gigafactory 3 there. Well, we've just talked about hundreds of millions of dollars being invested in a 10 gigawatt hour plant. A reminder that in Tesla's case, if their Gigafactory in Nevada is operating at peak capacity, they could get to 34 gigawatt hours. They're they're short of that at the moment. And that's a lot of capacity of cells they're making every single year. But how about this story? Evergrande, the Chinese firm believed to be the biggest real estate company in the world and backers of EVs and startups like Faraday Future and NEVS announced a massive 23 billion, yeah, with a B, billion dollar investment in the production of 1 million electric cars a year. 1 million electric cars a year. And the electric article I'm reading from says 500 gigawatt hours of batteries. But just hold your horses on that. We'll get to that at the end. Valuation uh, for the company, for Evergrande, about 100 billion. Revenues of 40 billion. So they're not short of a bob or two. Evergrande's been looking to expand into EVs after acquiring large stakes in EV companies. Evergrande says they've acquired key technologies in the sector now and planning to launch their own EVs in China in a big way. Massive investment of 23 billion US dollars in three factories in Guangzhou. Now, one of the commenters on Electric says this, the numbers don't make sense. It would be if you took a million cars a year with 500 gigawatt hours of batteries, that would be every car getting a 500 kilowatt hour pack. (laughs) <laughs> and the biggest Tesla comes with 100, so something's off. Maybe it's off by a factor of 10. And then there's another commenter in the electric comments that says this, Chinese numbers are different to our numbers. Their numbers go up in increments of 10,000 the way that Western numbers go up in increments of 1,000. So that's a factor of 10. Since 50 gigawatt hours would be sufficient for 1 million cars, so that makes more sense. This commenter does say, actually, you could say that Uh, They are going to make 500 gigawatt hours of batteries, but use 10% for the cars, if it's a factor of 10, and then the other 90% for home storage, somewhat unlikely. So just perhaps, just the numbers getting lost a little in translation there. I'm not sure what Electric used to translate it or where that came from, but in the comments section, it does appear to clear that up, that actually it's a $23 billion investment, 1 million EVs being made a year by Evergrande and 50 gigawatt hours of batteries or cell production per year. Don't get me wrong, that is still a stellar, stellar number, uh, which would be about double what Tesla are making at the moment. Uh, But that, that would be a more achievable number. Moving on to Aston Martin. Aston Martin has started production at its second plant in the UK in St. Athen in Wales. And pre-series vehicles of the SUV model DBX are rolling off the production line. The Lagonda all-electric version is what we're interested in. And that starts in 2022 at that plant, says Electrive. The Welsh plant was named Britain's home of electrification last year. Announced in early 2016, the Lagonda brand is to produce their very first all-electric model as well. The Rapid E is going to be made in in a limited edition of 155 units and production for Aston Martin's Lagonda electric car brand is going to start in St. Athen in 2021. Final story today, nothing to do with EVs. Just I, I just saw it flash up now on line and I thought I would pop it in the end of the podcast as I'm recording this. Governments and maritime agencies and uh, are urging an abundance of caution at the moment for ships operating in the Persian Gulf region. Two oil tankers, uh, according to the breaking news, seem to be damaged in what is suspected attacks near the strategic strait of Hormuz, reports Reuters in a breaking news article. At the time of recording, that's what seems to have happened. I don't know by the time you listen to this whether there's more clarity on the story. Details of the suspected attack on the ships in the Gulf of Oman, that's off the coast of Iran, Uh, Still pretty vague as this story comes in. The incident comes amid growing friction between Washington and Tehran in an area already fraught with tension 
Now, attacks on two oil tankers has left one completely ablaze and both of them adrift. The shipping firms have said driving up oil prices as I speak 4% and worries about Middle Eastern supplies are uh, of a concern to many people. What's of a concern to me, oh, you know, boo-hoo, Middle East oil supplies, I'm very sad for you, is the environmental impact on two oil tankers being attacked and one of them ablaze. The environmental impact to the immediate area of course, and a reminder that this kind of oil tanker movement happens all of the time and just because you might not be in the Middle East, so it doesn't affect you. This kind of thing could happen anywhere where oil tankers are moving things around. It just focuses the mind somewhat on the need for more renewables, more electric cars, more EVs being powered by renewables because... As the old joke goes, whenever there's an oil spill, the renewable version of that, a solar spill, well, we just call that a sunny day. Let's get on to our question of the week this week. It's our question of the fortnight because I didn't do it last Sunday because of Fully Charged Live and I'm blaming other things for my own incompetence. So for the first time, question of the fortnight. I'll read out your answers this Sunday. Should EVs qualify for special treatment and incentives? Financial, convenience, that kind of thing. Driving in bus lanes, let me know. Uh, You can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. Well, thank you very much to 220 patrons of this podcast. Your generosity means I get to keep making this show, and hopefully we entertain, hopefully we inform, and hopefully we spread the message to thousands of listeners every single day about a brighter future. Tomorrow will be show 500, and I'm not far off a big milestone on download. Oh, I'll say it anyway. I'm not not boasting whatever. Uh, because in in the grand scheme of things, I'm a tiny, tiny, tiny podcast. Uh, We're at 950,000 downloads, so we're not far off hitting 1 million downloads over the life of this podcast since we started last year. That's amazing. What a cool number that would be. And please do spread the word about EVs and spread the word about this podcast. If I can ask one favor... You know, I'm so desperate for publicity and I would love you to share this podcast in person with friends and family, with your mates online on forums. Please share this and please spread the word. If you know someone who's into EVs or just getting EV curious, oh man, I'd love you to spread this. Like say, hey, there's a little podcast. You might be interested if you can point them towards iTunes or Apple Podcasts, as they call it now, Google Podcasts, Spotify. The blog is evnewsdaily.com. Well, thank you as always to our premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future and Brad Crosby, a premium partner and a third to add to the list soon. Well, there are 498 previous episodes online for free right now. Get the new ones first and free and automatically by hitting subscribe. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you soon. And remember, I might not have to say this for much longer. There's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.